CP Voice. My next guest is a popular Christian comedian who hails from South Carolina. He won the 2012 Clean Comedy Challenge and he's emerging as one of America's top family-friendly comics. He's here to promote his latest DVD, Clean If It Kills Me. Please welcome the one and only, hilarious, <laughs> Marty Simpson. Marty, thank you so much Thanks for being here. Thanks for having here. me. I appreciate it's it. It's great to see Hales. you. Hales. I love it. I might have to use your voice on my <laughs> website. That's a great, you, great accent you, to introduce. I might play that at my shows You now. certainly can. He hails um, from South Carolina. Right. <laughs> You've been in the game five years. You yes. make a lot of people laugh. In your opinion, what makes a great comedian? I think uh, um, a great comedian is going to be talking truth, for starters, even if it's filthy. <laughs> I mean, I'm clean, but even the great comics that are dirty are rooted in truth yep. and real life experience. And I think that they're being themselves. I think that even the crazy characters, like Larry the Cable Guy, on some level has that crazy redneck Larry yeah. the Cable Guy inside him somewhere, or else it would ring <laughs> false. So I think. Um, you know, a great comedian is, is speaking from a place of truth and, and, and relatable to the audience. So they've been through some of the experiences they've been through, but also just not, not authentic. I mean, you gotta be authentic, I think yeah. is really. So the funny comes after all that. I think if you're talking truth and being yourself and doing you, we always say, just do you. <laughs> and, uh, and the funny kind of follows those, those people around, That's I think. That's so true. Um, congratulations on the new DVD, Clean If It Kills Me. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, we're pretty proud of it, or I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, my kids are pretty proud of it. Let's oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, it's kind of the conglomeration of the last six year journey of getting it all there. I mean, pretty much everything I do is on there. And um, the name itself came from my manager saying the word clean needed to be in the title. Uh -huh. So it was a struggle because I wanted, I have a joke about um, my kids don't bathe on Friday nights because yep. they play ball on Friday nights and on Saturday morning. Oh. So we just watch Face, Hands and Heine on Friday night. <laughs> Like, you know, just like, just wash your face, hands, and high knee, because we don't want to waste a bath in between <laughs> eight hour period. And I wanted to name it Marty Simpson's Face, Hands, and High Knee. But my manager was like, you do Christian comedy, you probably don't want that right next to Ken Davis, right. Fully Alive in Christ, that Marty Simpson's Face, Hands, and High Knee. So he's like, put the word clean in the title. So we went through like hundreds of titles. Right. And we almost settled on just Marty Simpson clean. <laughs> Like Eddie Murphy Raw, like we're the opposite of that. Right. But then my, my brother and I were like, we've done like a hundred titles, none of them are really that funny. Like it isn't easy being clean, like yeah. just some cheesy wordplays on clean. And then I'm like, this is gonna kill us. And then my brother was like, what about clean if it kills me? And I was like, huh. Because like, it implies the struggle that a comedian yeah. goes through to stay clean. And it implies the sort of the struggle of the Christ-like life, right? you know? And so I just, I felt like it was pretty good and it seems like it's been well received. So. Great choice. <laughs> um, you often refer to scripture in your mm -hmm. routine. Um, and I wonder, I, it's, it's super hilarious, but have you ever <laughs> been nervous about, you know, sort of using the Bible in your routine and have you ever been booed? Um, <laughs> yes, I think is the answer, honestly. But if anybody's watching, it's like, well, he's been rude. I'm not going to hire him. You need to ask yourself if you've ever been rude, Bingy. You know, <laughs> but, yeah. no, no. I think what you're asking is, have I ever gone a little too far on stage yeah, and offended yeah. people? Is what you're asking. And so, what I like to concentrate on, you know, the love the sinner but hate the sin. So, mm. what I like to make fun of is the person in the church or the Christian in the church, like mm -hmm. the way a person worships or the way what a pastor might say, as opposed to making fun of the root of scripture or of the cross or of Jesus or of God. Yeah. I try to not ever make light of that. So the scripture verses that jump out at me in a Bible study might might strike me funny. And then I, yeah. I think, well, gosh, in Isaiah chapter 20, we did a, a, an Old Testament study. That's probably the one you're thinking of, yeah. like, where Isaiah walked the earth naked. I'm like, it's really in there. You know, it really is in the I Bible. Know. And I so, had to check, by the way. I know, and you were probably checking it right as I was saying yeah. on the thing, like videotape everybody checking their iPhone, Bible Gateway for Isaiah chapter 20 right now. But so I just think anything that is in the Bible that's fair, fair game to talk about because it helps shift the conversation. If you're at a comedy club doing that and they're like, does it really say that? I'm like, it really does. And it also yeah. has a lot of good things and a lot of truth in there too. So. And I think it goes back to your first question. It's rooted in authenticity. I really do study the Bible. We really did have a Bible study. Right. We went through the prophets, found that verse that really happened in my life, and then I tell the story, and it kind of rings true on stage. So right. that's where I am. But but you do worry. There are some there are some pastors that will tell you before the show, hey, I saw this clip, and you know, steer clear of that because we had right. an issue in the church or whatever. But typically, if they've already hired you, they've probably seen enough to trust you. Yeah. And so... So that's, I just, and I pray beforehand, you, 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 you know, deal with the Holy Spirit beforehand to, to guide you For sure. with what you're saying. And um, you just kind of count on that. Excellent. But. Um, 
you're often applauded for being funny and witty, uh, but I personally find you somewhat educational. And I wonder, <laughs> is that ever something that you set out to do to educate people about the Bible? Um, thank you. <laughs> I was a teacher and a coach for nine years at right. a Christian private school. So I think I have that teacher in me and I stopped doing lesson plans somewhere in like yeah. year two or three and try to stay ahead of the kids and keep them distracted. So I think I always am <laughs> instructing with, because comedy is teaching. Hey, I'm teaching you what I'm, I want you to think so then I can trick you into not, <laughs> not having thought what I, where I took you. So every it's comedian true. is a teacher in a way, but they might not admit it or know it. So, yeah. but, um, but I think probably what you're referring to are like some of the life lessons or some of the things that are going on. And I think God has put a message in my heart to take to my comedy. Definitely my testimony, God is uh, good, make or miss, which is probably going to be the next DVD. I've got, I, I do a talk about my testimony about make or miss, oh, um, which you can see in an article recently that is, is online from my website. And, um, mm -hmm. But also the, the message to the parents of little leaguers, little league baseball players and yeah. football players across the country that their parents are just crazy, delusional, <laughs> insane, uh, not Christ-like acting Put parents it out there. and stuff. Yeah, so I feel like nobody in the church is going to deal with that crazy parent because they're like, how did we tell Mr. Wilson that he's an idiot? <laughs> so I feel like God has instructed me to go forth and, and spread that message. That um, Marty, I always wonder, like I said earlier, you make a lot of people laugh. What makes you laugh? Um, you know, comedians always joke. We sit in the back of the room and we're like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> and, oh, I see what she did there. I don't know. Right. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, I wish I would have wrote that. That's like yeah. the highest praise from a comedian. Oh. I wish I would have I wish that. I did it, yeah. But honestly, things that make me laugh, like my wife and I laugh all the time, and, and the joke in my house is, if I totally crack up my wife Ashley with something, it's not gonna work on stage. <laughs> but if I say, hey, I've got this wordplay I'm thinking about, you know, with liar, liar, pants on fire, and what do you, what do you think of this little thing I'm gonna do here? And she's like, right. <laughs> no. Then I'll say that on stage works every time. Yeah. So what I laugh at with my wife are things like we were, we were actually in LA in the back of my brother's car at, and going by Tom Cruise's house like okay. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, like on a little tour where you, yeah. you can find that. And, and we found a little window where you could see into his, the backyard. Really? Right, and we saw two people walking around and this is when he was married to Nicole Kidman. Oh, so we were yes. like, what if that's really Tom Cruise? And, and my brother was fascinated too. So he kept moving forward into that window where he could see in the driver's seat, but we yeah. were in the back seat. And we were like, back up. And he kept making it exactly <laughs> where my wife and I couldn't see into yeah. the window, and we literally almost oh like went to the bathroom in his back seat, laughing at how, <laughs> like we were there. He, there's Tom. Right. Nope. <laughs> oh, there, there. nope. But, so I think like getting into situations that are inappropriate, like if you're in seventh grade and your your friend does something inappropriate and you get the giggles, and like that that really makes me laugh. Yeah. Or in public, sometimes just and that's New York City has made me laugh a lot. Yeah. Gosh. Because my comedian friend and I walked around kind of acting like the crazy New Yorkers to oh. see if anybody would notice us. Because yeah. I was curious sociologically if the crazy person notices everybody staring at them. Right. So I just walk down the street every now and then like talking to myself, looking at the ground like this. <laughs> Nobody in New York Didn't looks blink. like They don't even care. We're all They're jaded. Like, well, not even jaded. They just know that. Well, there goes this is this block. This is this this is Fifty Sixth Street crazy guy. Like we don't need to deal with him, you know. So and um, that that kind of stuff makes me laugh. Yeah, but. for sure. Um, and final question: What's the most fulfilling part about making people laugh? Well, I think that I started concentrating on bringing the blessing mm -hmm. instead of getting a blessing. When you first start mm -hmm. doing it for money. You're like, well, I want to take this gig because it pays twice as much as this gig, or I want to go to this church because the love offering will be way bigger. And, sure. And you get wrapped up in that a little bit when you're trying to feed your family. But then God just kind of put on my heart through a guy named Doc Tunde, who's a comedian in South Carolina too. Mm -hmm. He actually just won the Dove Award for Comedian of the oh, Year. Wow. He's one of my mentors. He taught us that if you work on uh, being the blessing instead of receiving the blessing, then everything takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. So a show in Valentine's Day this past year, it was a little... 200 member church. I said yes because I had the date, but it was like maybe a tenth of what I normally charge. So I'm driving there bitter the whole time. <laughs> like, oh. and, and usually how far off the interstate a church is, the worse the show is going to be. Oh, is no. a joke. I mean, if you go to a little country church way out in oh, the sticks, you're I like, see. this is going to be horrible. <laughs> Terrible. And so I got out there and I did the show and it was amazing. It oh, was wow. one of the best shows I've ever had. And a lady came up to me after the show and said, I want to let you know, 
that my husband passed away over Christmas break mm. two, two and a half months ago and that he loved comedy and that I could hear my husband laughing the whole show oh. and you were such a blessing to me and I was like here I was judging like this is only yeah, one tenth of, of the normal money and, I, and then like you know I just things like that. that's probably most the most fulfilling thing is when you really resonate with somebody in the audience that's going through some pain you know and they come up to you after and just say thank you for bringing wow bringing that so that's that's probably the best Very thing. powerful. Yeah. Marty Simpson, thank you so much for sharing your life and making me. us laugh. Really appreciate, appreciate you being it. here. I thank love being you. here. Thanks. Thank you for watching CP Voice. Again, the DVD, Clean If It Kills Me, is available via Marty Simpson's website. That's martysimpson.com, M-A-R-T-Y Simpson.com. For any questions, please email us at cpvoice at christianpost.com. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Throughout my time with Marty, I was delighted with his effortless humor and his love for the gospel. I enjoyed hearing him explain why he's so passionate about making people laugh. I also have tremendous respect for his ability to infuse scriptural elements into his routine. Being funny is easy, but being funny in a clean and respectful manner takes a lot of skill. I look forward to his future projects.